Okay, welcome to Gone Traveling. Uh, we are looking at the B BKT Euro Cup, the road to greatness, as they're calling it. Uh, with me on this adventure on the on the road is Sergio Yebres. Uh, Sergio, uh, how are you? Uh, round one is in the books. Uh, how are you feeling? Hi, David. Uh, round one was quite exciting, I think. Uh, we were hoping... Uh, basketball to to start and it was very a very good round and I think there's only gonna be better from now there's only gonna be better basketball for now uh, a lot of debutants a lot of surprises uh, very few the uh, disputed games uh, and overtime so let's talk about it because there there was a lot of action there yeah um home teams went three and one on Tuesday and then the road teams went four and two on uh, on Wednesday uh we had a, a, a thriller uh at Cluj with Cedavito winning they had also had a game winner for Ulm um and Joventut Hapul Tel Aviv I would say lived up to the hype and Valencia throwing it down against uh, Jerusalem um so just the format just so that you're kind of aware we're not going to talk about all the games. Um, we want to, you know, get in and get out and, 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 you know, give you something to, to listen to get a little bit of, of, of what's going on. Um, our views on sort of, sort of the bigger, uh, stories. Um, and then, uh, and, and just so that you, you know, you might be looking for your team. They might, we not might, we might not talk about them this week, but we'll get them next week or the week after, you know, we, there's, there's, there's 20 teams and a lot of action. So just, so, just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Uh, just so that you're aware, um, not that you say, oh, man, you know, why didn't you talk about my game? You know, it, there's a lot of podcasts out there. And and to to keep your interests, you figured to keep it short and sweet. Um, so what we do is we're going to each pick a game that we kind of want to talk about. And then uh, and then uh, and then we'll talk about a player slash performance and then one kind of surprising guy. So that's just our format that we're going to start with. Uh, so. I will let uh, I will let you uh, start with the um, the the game of the the week in your eyes. Well, there was a, a lot of games that were quite exciting, but for me, uh, I have to choose um, the one with Klug. Uh, there was a lot of action, and Klug was winning uh, from one point. Uh, with the less than a minute and then Davante Jones came strong with his debut and uh, he made like five points straight with a, a triple that was uh, phenomenal. Um, Coach Mitrovic and Chechum Mulero had their first win uh, as a staff of Sedevita Olympia and now uh, Sedevita Olympia needed like uh, 16 games uh, last year to win one and now uh, the Slovenians have one win at the first try. Uh, so quite positive, this project. And from zero, they're now trying to make uh, new steps. And they are going to be uh, one team to consider uh, besides uh, what we thought last year. So uh, very good for them. The last two years, Cedavita yeah. reaching after you know going to the playoffs and doing pretty well with a with a really fun team. The last two years I was really disappointed, and that and mm -hmm. that kind of um, you know that kind of uh, came, you know spilled over into this season. Uh, the the uh, the 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 preview the, the 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 power rankings. I had them a little bit lower. Just thinking about the last two years, I know a major coaching change and, and bringing yeah. in some new pieces. Um, Cluj has to be really disappointed about losing this game. You know, they had the big run to to take um it looked like control and and then uh, just weren't able to, you know, gave up the final eight points. Um I'm I'm gonna go from uh for for my game, I had the, the overtime thriller, um Ulm beating beating uh, Treffle, so put um, you know, Justinian Jessup. Uh, 20 points, five threes. He had the game winning three with two seconds left. And, you know, um, you know, that's, that's uh, going to be probably overlooked. Um, and I guess kind of rightfully so with the, the performance of the teenagers, Ben Saraf and, and Noah Essing, um, you know, really just 
were fantastic the whole game. Uh, and you saw Saraf really take over in the in the fourth quarter, and 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 then uh, and and also helping as saying do the same with overtime. And and this Ulm team, you know, they were missing Karim Yalo and actually their captain as well, uh, Tommy Klapais. Um, and so the fact that they were able to win this game, first game uh, in the Euro Cup. Uh, on the road, uh, you know, an excited atmosphere for Truffle, their first game uh, uh, in uh, in 12 years. And I tell you, you know, as I warned, you know, Truffle's going to win some games. You know, you look at Philip, you look at Shank, you look at Sikowski, Dressel, you Best. Told me. You told me. Um, and and Van Fleet didn't play. I don't know why he didn't play, but he was a big part of their championship last year. And you also have to think about, besides Phillips, 45 games, and Best had 18 games in the Euro Cup, um, Mikhail well, uh, with Linsky with five games in, in 2018 19 is the only other player on this um, uh, truffle team that even played in the Euro Cup. And and Tabak and coach Tabak said afterwards, he said, you know, we just lacked experience. Um, and so, you know, they, you know, they played some good basketball. Um, when Van, Van Fleet comes in, comes back in, you know, he's a seven footer uh, Belgian national team player, you know, he's going to be a big help for them. Um, so, you know, I think both teams can really be happy uh, with this game. Yeah, I agree with you. Truffle support was winning like for 37 minutes. I think they were, they were up by 12 points. They were up by, they were up by 10 with seven minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. They were quite dominant and they have some little good pieces. Uh, Jacob Schenk was phenomenal, uh, quite efficient, a uh, few shots, but, uh, uh, good points. So I think I agree with you because uh, they have a lot of uh, road to make, a uh, lot of Poland players that are interesting. So in the in the other part, Ulm, how can a teenager point guard can be that good uh, in both debuts, in Bundesliga and in EuroCup? Ben Saraf is uh, the present, not the future for me, in just one game in its competition. Uh, so physical, uh, so good defes defensively. Uh, he was uh, cutting uh, the passes. He's, he was always looking for his uh, teammates. Uh, very good um, at the transitions. Uh, open court was phenomenal. Pick and roll. Mm, I, ben Saraf, for the ones that doesn't know him, just... He's one player to look in this Euro Cup, and well, he's gonna be a star. Definitely, uh, <laughs> and yeah. you just have to look at those first two games, and just you know we're and and he's just learning, you know, and yeah. and and also coach is just learning, you know, he's a new coach um, at Ulm, and and so um, you know you get all of this, put all this together, and you just have to say, man, you know, we get to watch a full season of Ben Saraf, you know, from the very beginning, and. And it's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to watch a lot of own games this year um, and uh, and just take him in. Um, OK, let's let's move to uh, sort of um, our our um, our uh, top performance uh, player uh, that we you know want to talk about. I'm going to I'm going to actually go with, with Patrick Beverly um, with Hapul Tel Aviv, uh, 78. 75 road loss to Jovan Tut. Um, and, you know, obviously big name coming over, uh, 36 year old, you know, he had a, a six to one assist turnover ratio, three steals, 14 points, but one of six in four of um, twos, four, one of six on twos and, um, and uh, four of 10 on threes, four of 10 on threes. And I thought, you know, 36 year old, um, you know, you know, I'm as a defender and, you know, I guess, in the, you know, I was looking back because, you know, I, I don't watch a lot of NBA. And so I kind of went back and, you know, he was known as a three pointer. He had he shot between 38 and 40 percent for six seasons in a row. Um, but since 2020, 21 season, um, that was the last time he shot 39 percent. And the last time he took 10 threes in a game was March 23rd for the Bulls. And he also um, had um, uh he also had uh, uh, in in December of twenty two. Uh, so the twenty two twenty three seasons, twenty three season. Um, his record for the most threes in a game was thirteen um, on January eighteenth, two 
2009, while he's playing for Dmitry Dempropovsk uh, in Ukrainian's second division as a 20-year-old rookie. Um, and, uh, you know, 16 shots, I, I can't imagine that's what uh, a lot of people had on their on their bingo card when they brought in Patrick Beverly, um, you know, defender, you know, playmaker, like I said, six to six to one assist turnovers really uh, ratio was really good. Um, but I just wonder, especially the three pointers, uh, four to 10, uh, four of 10 in a, in a three point road loss. Um, so that's, that's my, uh, my player performance. I want to, uh, that was kind of a renaissance for him. Uh, he's now 26. Uh, 36. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, but he's like 10 years. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe younger. he feels like he's in the, uh, he's back in Europe. Yeah, um, he feels, he's... yeah, and also he said he's like in the paradise here in Europe. Uh, I think uh, he, this is going to uh, make him uh, enjoy basketball. Uh, more than in the NBA because he's uh, more on the spot and he's uh, starring a, a team with uh, very good bigs. Uh, that's going to help him a lot. Uh, but almost a third of the threes were by him, as you told. Uh, kind of, that was for me kind of a, an exaggeration. Uh, but it was a very good game for him. And if you saw the, the precision, uh, you, you could think that uh, Beverly was going to be with a little bit uh, of rhythm, but he played and displayed a good game. And for me, I I, I must take uh, Antetomic, uh, the the player he 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 played against uh, the center. Uh, the creation made a another classic performance for him. Uh, Thirty two points of of efficiency. Um, at 37 years old, we're talking about another uh, young guy <laughs> right now. And in, in 23 minutes, uh, he was able to, to score 17 points uh, with a very good efficiency, eight out of nine points uh, shots made with 12 rebounds uh, of the 40 of the team. So very good uh, numbers. And once again, one year uh, again, Tommy is... Uh, the main guy uh, for Juventud uh, around the the basket and um, with Pustovi, uh, the Ukrainian guy uh, who is with the same mold as him, a uh, very tall guy uh, who can play off the ball uh, and the pick and rolls. People were saying that they were they were like two two guys very similar, but uh, Tomic uh, in this type of games he's gotta play a a very good role. Uh, Pustovi played 17 minutes, very good minutes, all uh, two, 11 points, uh, with no miss on the free throw line. That is, that's very positive from him. And, and yeah, uh, Bibes, Hanga uh, were uh, giving Tomic the, the keys of the game, and that's why they, they won. Uh, Juventud got the first one. Uh, in the most important game, so uh, Tomic was very key there. Yeah, the, the ageless, the ageless. Yeah, one. unbelievable. Yeah, he, but he's he, still doing he, it. He doesn't need no well. You know, uh, his his style of game, his game style doesn't need uh, any any fuel to 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 be played. All right, let's move on. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, the surprise of the um, of the game day. I'll let you start. For me, uh, the most surprising guy, I must say that Jared Harper got my my attention for the narrative, uh, the, the story that was behind. Uh, Jared came uh, from from the NCAA, uh, from Auburn. Uh, to Europe to play with Valencia Basket two years ago with Alex Mumbrou. Uh, he was like the microwave guy, the, the guy who you put to to score like 10 points in two minutes. And once uh, he, he parted ways with Valencia, he signed with uh, Hapoel Jerusalem. This is 
this was his debut in Euro Cup and with this team in Europe and precis and precisely was against Valencia uh, and Valencia fans were quite excited to to see what he could do uh, he was uh, very good at the Israeli Cup uh, scoring a lot and it was also the case against Valencia but maybe the surprising thing is that uh, he was quite of omnipresent uh, role in Hapoel and he's been designated to be the floor general when you can find his strengths by executing the plays, not making them by himself. Uh, he seemed quite selfish, but uh, this is Jonathan Alon, the coach, uh, decision. So uh, it was it was kind of intriguing the role that Jared Harper can do. And maybe we can see I start here, but he needs to play a lot of, of games as a point guard and trying to learn uh, the differences between a shooting guard and a point guard here. Uh, I'm going to go with Keandre Kennedy of um, of uh, Viola Hamburg, uh, Towers Hamburg. Uh, sure, they lost by 20 points, uh, yeah. but but Kennedy, uh, you know, Kennedy really uh, impressed me in 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 a in a couple of different ways. He's a six six wing who can handle the ball. Uh, originally from Atlanta. Uh, grades didn't let him uh, go to any any big school. Uh, went to a ju junior college and then went to um, University of Flor uh, Mar Maryland Portland, which is in the America East Conference, so not a very big conference. Um, helped them win the regular season championship in twenty one, and then reached the final of the AEC in 20, uh, 2022. and then went to a University of North Carolina Greensboro for his final year, which is you know it's. A little bit bigger, but still not not that much bigger. Last season, he was at Torino in the second division of Italy, um, and he helped them reach the 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 playoff, the the quarterfinals of the playoffs. And um, you know, Hamburg GM uh, Marvin Willoughby, uh, when they signed him for his second season in Europe, they called him, you know, sort of a raw diamond, and 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 you could see that. You know, he's yeah. he's he's twenty four. Um, and, you know, he, he definitely showed that he can uh, shoot the three, uh, 17 points, five of seven on threes, um, also had uh, five assists. And, um, and uh, you know, he's, he's a guy that can definitely contribute on the, on the defensive end as well. Uh, two steals, only had two turnovers, um, you know, with that, you know, five to uh, five to two assist turnover is not bad. Scored uh, eight points in, for Ham for Hamburg in their win over Alba, and then had uh, twelve points in their cup loss to to Heidelberg. You know, it's a it's a a, a wiry frame on the wing, and uh, you know, for a first first game on a on a continental level, uh, I was really re uh, impressed with him, and uh, really a guy that I'm going to you know really look forward to to seeing how he develops. Uh, so Keandre Kennedy of uh, Viola Hamburg. Again, just because a team loses by 20 points, you know, doesn't mean that a guy can't really surprise you. So uh, that's that's my guy. Um, and also and also in the first round, uh, you got to see the players and these kind of profiles are quite intriguing. Uh, Euro Cup is per perfect for this. And, and Kennedy was a guy that wasn't shiny, uh, shining um, in, in CAA also. Uh, he wasn't averaging a lot of points. So it was surprising that in his very first game, uh, he made this this performance. That just goes to show you the depth of American basketball, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> and also, what it also shows you, what it also shows you, and this is, you know, I live in Germany, so I see this um, mm -hmm. very often, is that the the scouting um, that that the that the German clubs have is is tremendous. You know, you go. This is a this was a really a nobody. You know, I mean, let's call him a nobody. Um, in college, you know, okay, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, Greensboro, it's okay, it's you know, um, but Maryland, Baltimore, you know, that's that's really no nowhere. And then, um, yeah. and then to go from second division in Italy um, to to Euro Cup, massive move. So, um, you know, hats that off means, to the Hamburg. That means something, yeah. All right, anything else in uh, round one, or you want to jump ahead to round two? Well, uh, round one, uh, maybe. We can say that uh, the main 
the main team was Valencia Basket. Uh, he they displayed uh, a very good uh, effort team, uh, team effort uh, against uh, Apoel Jerusalem. Apoel Jerusalem was is one of the contenders uh, of its group, but Valencia managed to win by twenty points. And that was a very clear message from Pedro Martinez and, and the Taronchas. They didn't play well a lot, uh, but I, I think they're like one step uh, from the other teams and they showed that in, in the very first round. And looking at, yeah, so. No, I, I just don't, you, you said they didn't play well. I don't think anybody really played well, no. you know, per se, just because it's so early in the season. Some of these teams, this was their first game, uh, you know, you know, real game of the year, you yeah. know, so, you know, trying to read too much uh, on, you know, in round one, it, it's it's kind of hard, um, but it's, uh, it's yeah, I just think September. the plenty of the talent really shine through too, you know. Yeah. And looking at round two, um, there are, there are very interesting games. But I must say, uh, we all should see, watch uh, all uh, Rajo Farmul, uh, Juventud Badalona, two two winning teams in the first round, that uh, and also two teams that uh, historically uh, produce uh, young talents, uh, great talents for uh, Marcio Santos uh, here against. Tommy and Pustovi in, in the paint. Uh, we got to follow Ben, ben Safar, uh, Noah Senge, Justin and Jisup. Okay. 20 points and a, a key three to win the game uh, in the first round. And let's see if Juventud can repeat its play style from the beginning of the Apple's last game. He, they were phenomenal in the very first five minutes in the first quarter. And we got to see uh, the level Ulm can reach and how's Juventud a contender against this kind of teams. Yeah, that that's like that for me that's definitely the 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 biggest game to watch. Um mm -hmm. uh, it, it's gonna be a good test for Ulm in their um uh playing against those veterans, you know, Rebus um you know, Rivas, Vives, uh, uh, Tomic, uh, Hanga, and the, all those young guys, and see how they're able to to play against those mm -hmm. guys. Um, we also have Istanbul Derby uh, with uh, Bacasira and against Besiktas. Both teams went uh, one and uh, won their opener, uh, so that's going to be a big game. And the other one I kind of looking forward to is Borg against um, against uh, Cluj. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Cluj really cannot uh, you know be happy about you know how they finish that game. And then uh, you know, Borg, you know, they they beat Hamburg, um, who, you know, is a totally new team. And so uh so that's another game that's gonna be uh interesting. Um anything else? Well, uh Borg is a, a very interesting team. Uh, Brandon Paul, Joel Ayagi, uh, Hugo Benitez, uh, Xavier Castañeda, they they have a lot of uh, good talent there and I think uh, they're going to be more uh, at the top that we think and following the the steps they made last year with a very with a very new team so all right round one on the road to greatness is in the books uh Sergio why don't you uh, tell people? where they can follow you on, on Twitter, uh, X, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, I'm Jevres11, uh, Jevres11 uh, in Twitter. And yeah, uh, mostly follow this uh, this podcast to be aware of the weekly action in the EuroCup. And also, of course, uh, follow Hein News in Twitter. Yeah, Hein News, H-E-I-N-N-E-W-S. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, round one's in the books. Uh, Sergio, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank um, you, David. Have, the, have a couple of, uh, have a few days, a weekend uh, to look forward to, to round two. And uh, we will talk about it then. So this has been the Gone Traveling Show. Talk to you next week.